Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, XP82 Twin Mustang project nearing completion. Air Canada pilot lines up to land on taxiway at KSFO. And drone attorney creates commercial pilot database. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's July 14th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Tom Riley's XP82 Twin Mustang restoration project reached several milestones over the past month, and the aircraft restoration expert says that the project is nearing completion. Riley wrote at the first of the month that in the past month, the outboard fairings from each leading edge to trailing edge of the fuselage to wing have been completed. The final seam welding of the two outboard forward fairings was completed as June came to an end. The last two parts to complete are the two lower halves of the inboard side of each fuselage to center section fairing. The team is close to finishing work on the left side top engine cowling, which should be completed this month. The lower chin cowl to air induction trunk adapters, which join the chin cowls to the air induction trunks, as well as the adapter covers to rubber seal these two removable joints. The only remaining thing to do is to install the rubber for the seals, which are in order. The electrical system, which Riley says should be finished this month, and exhaust stack fairings, which are being fabricated through 3D printing. Additionally, Riley says the avionics package should be installed this month. To date, there have been over 173,000 man and woman hours devoted to restoring the aircraft. This could have gone really, really badly. The pilot of an Air Canada A320 on approach to San Francisco International Airport lined up to land on a taxiway on which four airplanes were lined up for takeoff. Media reports indicate that this is not yet known exactly how close to the ground the A320 came, but recorded audio from the tower indicates that one pilot said that the plane flew directly over us. The transcript of the audio indicates that the pilot was apparently unaware he was lined up on the taxiway rather than the runway. And uh, tower, just want to confirm, uh, camera 759, uh, we see some lights on the uh, runway there, the runway, can you confirm the Air Canada 759 confirms clear to land runway 2A right. There's no one on 2A right but you. Okay, Air Canada 759. Where's this guy going? He's on the taxiway. Air Canada go around. In the go around, Air Canada 759. Air Canada 759 looks like we're lined up. Uh, fly heading 280, sign maintain 3000. Heading 280, 3000, Air Canada 759. Uh, United 1, Air Canada flew directly over us. Lock, uh, 59 and 1, Air Canada flew directly over us. Yeah, I saw that, guys. The flight eventually landed about 50 minutes behind schedule. Air Canada did not reply to requests for a comment on the incident. The FAA is investigating. After the break, a new commercial drone database has been announced. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Progressive Aerodyne C-Ray Adventure offers Rotax 912 power, a basic instrument panel and radios. Fly it away for under $120,000. Visit CRay.com for more details. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. If you want to hire a drone pilot for whatever reason, current U.S. law requires them to be licensed by the FAA to fly commercially. Hiring a licensed drone pilot protects the client as well as the drone community. To that end, Peter Sachs, drone attorney and advocate, author of Drone Law Journal and The Drone Guy on Twitter, has established commercial drone pilot. 
The site is a searchable database designed to make it easier to find an FAA licensed commercial drone pilot who offers services in particular states throughout the United States. This site provides you with an easy way to find an FAA licensed commercial drone pilot by location served. Whether you need aerial photos or video surveying, map and inspection, search and rescue, or news media services or interviewees, you can start your search on the site. The site brings value to pilots by providing an additional inexpensive means of marketing your aerial services by making it easier to be found by those looking for FAA licensed commercial drone pilots by the locations they serve. If you hold a current FAA remote pilot certificate, you qualify to be listed in this directory. It's Friday, and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. Jim, however, has given up the helm this week because he can think of nothing more important than making sure you hear what Jack Pelton has to say about the incredible dangers ahead with the potential of ATC privatization. Here's this week's barnstorming. I'm coming to you with a personal request. I desperately need your help and support on an issue that could potentially have grave impacts for general aviation. We've been keeping you informed about the privatization of the air traffic control organization, and now it's becoming very close to being a reality if we do not stop this bill in the House. The way the bills propose, they would move the air traffic control organization out from the FAA and put it into a private entity where we as GA pilots and private citizens lose con complete control and oversight of what that board may or may not do to general aviation. The concern that we all have is that inevitably it will increase the cost of all of us to fly in the airspace that we know and love that is part of our public uh, access that we've shared for years. And we also see that even though while they're talking about trying to prevent additional costs to general aviation, there's no way long term that a new system that wants to increase the modernization cost, wants to have more access for the commercial airlines, will in fact not come with more costs and will also uh, squeeze general aviation out to having less access. It's a concern that is not one that uh, we have not seen throughout the rest of the world. The models that they're looking at have demonstrated that general aviation loses when you go to a privatized system. So the concern I have is we have to contact Congress immediately. Within the next couple days, there's gonna be a bill that will probably go to the House floor and you can help me by calling your representatives personally to making a plea to ensure that they vote no on privatization measure in the, in the bill that's titled H.R. 2997, the 21st Century AIRR Act. It's very easy for you to help. We have the ability uh, for you to go out to govt.eaa.org slash congress. And when you go to that page, you put your zip code in and it'll identify who your House of Representatives rep is. And on that page gives all of the information and phone numbers for you to call either their local office or their Washington office. And I'd encourage you to call the local office and be able to tell them, do not support the ATC privatization measure. It's critical that we get this done immediately before it goes to vote on the House floor. So I urge you to help me take action in making your voices heard. After these messages, DOD buys more F-35s. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch.
the Defense Department plans to buy an additional 74 F-35 Joint Strike Fighters, a move that will boost the cost of the program by an estimated $5.57 billion. The contract is an indicator of progress in the negotiations for the next lot of the airplanes. DOD Joint Program Office spokesman Joel Della Vadova said that the next lot will include 50 airplanes sold to foreign governments, bringing the total for the lot to 141 airplanes. As part of the continuing effort to accelerate aerospace innovation, Boeing and FedEx Express will work together to fly the next Eco Demonstrator. Starting in 2018, a new Boeing 777 freighter made for FedEx Express will test emerging technologies, such as propulsion advancements and flight tech innovations. The Eco Demonstrator program, now in its fifth iteration, serves as a series of flying test beds designed to improve the environmental performance and safety of future airplanes. The Aurora Group has commissioned a review of Heathrow's airport's plans for expansion and says it believes there are cheaper and better solutions to expand Heathrow and address the need for more airport capacity in the southeast. The group's views have been submitted to the Department of Transport in its recent consultation on the expansion plans. Sun Country Airlines has appointed Jude Bricker to be its new president and chief executive officer. Bricker previously served as the CEO and EVP of Allegiant Airlines. Bricker was with Allegiant Airlines from May 2006 through May 2017. Bricker started with an Allegiant as manager of fleet planning, then served as director of fleet planning, vice president of corporate finance, and senior vice president of planning. Draken International has been deployed 11 L-159 Advanced Light Combat Aircraft to Nellis Air Force Base to provide direct adversary support to the company's USAF adversary air contract. Upon arrival at Nellis, the L-159 aircraft took to the skies after receiving a military flight release authorizing the integration of the L-159 fighter with the USAF assets. The L-159s join 13 A-4 Skyhawks that Draken has already operating in support of this contract. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. To help incentivize owners of general aviation aircraft to meet the FAA's ADSB out equipage mandate, the AEA will randomly award five aircraft owners with $1,000 toward an ADSB compliant upgrade during the EAA's Air Venture Oshkosh July 24th through 30th in Wisconsin. This year marks the fourth consecutive year that the AEA has made the $1,000 award available to five aircraft owners. The repair shop industry in the U.S. has less than two and a half years to equip the general aviation fleet of more than 100,000 aircraft of ADSB. SB out avionics, said AEA President Paula Dirks. Aircraft owners who want to equip will face scheduling pressure and likely higher installation costs as we get closer to the January 1st, 2020 deadline. Aircraft owners may enter to win one of the five 1,000 awards in Hangar B at Whitman Regional Airport beginning July 24th. The AEA will announce one winner each day from July 24th through July 28th. Each of the five winners must use an AEA member avionics repair station to complete the installation, and the installation must be scheduled by August 1st, 2018. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you Monday.